Get Advisor Fit with Olivia Looper, a series of interviews with financial consultants and industry experts helping financial advisors strategize, market, and grow their business using core fitness values and analogies. Do something today that your future self will thank you for with Get Advisor Fit. Here's your host, Olivia Looper. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, uh, this trend has been reflected in the fact that, you know, even um, that, that content marketing is taking over, the inbound marketing is taking over versus outbound marketing. Instead of being disruptive and annoying and going out and getting and hooking, it is this attraction, this connection. I mean, this is not just in the financial advisor space. This is literally everywhere. Um, you read anything from any of the top, you know, uh, marketing guys in, in the industry, in any industry, this is what everyone is saying, because this is the way that we as humans are operating. This is the way that this is what we're looking for right now. Um, and so, you know, we have to take heed of this. And, and I think it's fantastic. I think that this type of connection is really more authentic. It's more authentic to us as human beings and who we are. And, um, and, and it helps pair you with the right products and services and people that will benefit you. Uh, and well, you're not just, you know, being sold to, you're not just buying, you're actually connecting and the chances of that becoming a beneficial relationship as a result are much higher. Well, and not only that, but I, I just want to step back. And again, I, the obvious is, is always a, a great place to spend a little time. I love that. Here's what this looks like, right? This is what this, this is the transformation. I'm going to say even five years ago, Right. I, and, and possibly even three years ago, and, and maybe in a lot of people's minds right now, the thought of two content writers who are occupying the same place in an industry. Right. And, right. and we are just down the road from one another. Right? I know. You're 40 minutes away. I could come see you today. I know. Like, but here's the thing. You hit the Norton. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, maybe that's we'll put that on the calendar. I would love it. And we'll 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 put a picture of the Pollock they have on display up for exactly. Everybody, right? <laughs> um, here's the thing. I think it would be inconceivable for a lot of people that you would have a podcast like this happening because for all intents and purposes, in what I'm gonna suggest if it hasn't become, is becoming, and needs to become an outmoded way of doing business. I love competition, right? I'm a huge hockey fan. That requires watching, in my case, unfortunately, a team. I'm from Michigan originally, so I'm on the losing end as a fan. <laughs> a very big deal these days. But here's the thing. I, I love competition, but I also really value and I, I think what we're finding is, and what we're going to continue to see is, is the way business is done is changing. I'm going to say it already has. And that change has everything to do with cooperation, with collaboration, in finding new and different ways to define what competition is, right? Now, I'm also a tennis player, although goodness gracious, it's been a minute since I've been on the tennis court. And what I will say is, I know it's a cliche, but in some cases, cliches actually do work. And this is one of them. When I'm on a tennis court and I'm playing singles, I'm competing against my opponent, sure, but I'm really competing against myself. And that's ultimately true in terms of how I envision a competitive marketplace. I'm always going to try to do it better than I've done it before. I'm always going to try to serve my client even better than I did the previous time, because I've learned a little more, right? Now, that's not to say it's bad and it gets good. What that is to say is it's good and it just continues to get better. It gets more effective, more persuasive, as we have an opportunity to work together to define the brand, the messaging, the marketing materials that are going out. And that, right, that doesn't happen with us competing against one another. That happens when we have conversations like this, share out what we know, create a collaborative environment where, and here's, I think, another important thing for your, your listeners to, to, to recognize. I, I, you make a great point of, of, of saying this. This is one of your through lines is style is our differentiator, right? 
You and I do this differently, even though we share a background that not a lot of our colleagues do, even though we approach this as writers first, you and I are going to do this differently. We're going to find a different way to amplify and elevate the voice of our client. And that's true for every content writer and copywriter out there. Elizabeth Morgan is going to do it differently than Dave Harlan does it, right? Sarah Blakely is going to do it differently than someone like Seth Godin is going to do it. And the truth is, that's where it gets really exciting, right? That's where it gets, I, I, I can't write. And, and again, I, I, I want to note the irony I can't write in your voice, writing in the voice of a client that you're writing for, right? Exactly. I'm going to write in their voice from a slightly different perspective. And, uh, you know, for your listeners, I just think that's a really important uh, thing to be aware of is that, you know, you may have an experience with a particular copywriter, a content writer who just doesn't quite get it in the way that, that you need or want them to get it. I don't want that to, to burn you on, on working with someone else. Just know that, and, and that's, that is not to say that that situation involved somebody who doesn't do what you and I do well. It's just that that partnership didn't develop and that copywriter or content writer wasn't able to say it or write it just like you mean it. Right. And so, again, I don't think in a lot of people's minds, having a podcast like this is inconceivable. I love it that, that we've had this opportunity and then we get to continue to, to work alongside one another. Absolutely. And I mean, I hate to, to bring up this acting thing again, but I, I would like to think about I'd like you to think about this for a moment. You see a movie with someone in it. Let's say uh, the star is Leonardo DiCaprio. The I. I can't, I know this comes from a specific example, but this one is just completely made up. You see a movie, the lead is Leonardo DiCaprio. He does great. But then you find out that really who they wanted to cast was, I don't know, somebody else, name an actor. Keanu Reeves. Uh, Keanu Reeves. They really wanted Keanu Reeves. But then you can't unsee Leonardo DiCaprio as the lead, right? Okay, because you know that Keanu would have played that differently. And I think yeah. it's very similar with content writers. You, we can all probably do a pretty good job, but there are going to be people who fit you better, who fit your voice, your role, your mission even better. You know, um, you, I mean, I... I seem to really work well with advisors who work with business owners um, for whatever reason. You know, um, that's not to say that I don't do a good job for advisors who work with women or uh, dentists or whatever. But for this just seems to have been something that I found I work well with for writing for business owner clients. So, you know. Let, don't get discouraged if your first content writer is not the right fit. Try some other ones. See, you know, you might like somebody else's process better. You might like their voice better. I personally have been told by someone in the industry, hey, you did a great job, but this guy's a little closer to who I sound like. And I said, good. I'm glad you found someone because, you know, even as someone who I do have a, a group of writers that I have outsourced some of my work to, yep. so I have an outsourced team. I know how difficult it is to find a writer to work in a different voice. And, you know, it's it's not an easy process. There's a lot of, you know, letting go that has to be done. I mean, from just a mental perspective, just the idea of letting someone else capture your voice or, um, it, and it's not always easy, but don't be discouraged. There are a lot of talented people out there um, like Derek, like myself, you know, like, I mean, there aren't that many in the financial services space that I know of, but, um, just That's don't get hurt. Just keep trying because, like you said, time is the most valuable asset you have, and you don't need to be wasting it, stressing it out, trying to figure out how you're going to get these words on the page. You know, just don't even do that to yourself. The best thing that you can do is is collaborate with, with someone who can help you. I mean, if it came to me and numbers and math things like that, I just let somebody else do it because yeah, I like and that's. <laughs> Well, and, and again, that's such an important point. As we said at the top, not everyone can do this, right? It is difficult to be able to take an idea that you know 
is going to resonate with your audience and convey it in the language that they are not only going to recognize, but respond to. It is extremely difficult to be able to do that. And again, I know that there are people who are applying very constructive pressure to this, and I applaud those efforts, right? It, it is important to also talk about the effectiveness of good writing, right? The ways in which it can be made to seem easy. And that's where our expertise comes in. But Olivia, I couldn't agree with you more. The last thing that we want any of your listeners to experience is the frustration of having a transformative idea and feeling, and I wanna underscore that word, and feeling like you can't communicate it to someone else. I'm working with a prospective client right now who came to me with that very sentiment in mind, he wrote me this really heartfelt email about feeling frustrated about not being able to say he knows how important what he's doing is. And one of the things that I did, and, and this is, again, I think one of our differentiators, one of the first things I did in my response to him is say, look, and, and this is counterintuitive, I know, but your frustration is a good sign here because what it's telling me and what it's going to tell anyone on your team is this means so much to you Matt. that you can't rest easy because you feel like you're not able to convey this to people whose lives you know you can transform once they've had a chance to hear it, to see it in action. And I also mentioned to him not only that that would be one of the areas that we aimed at resolving together, but that one of the most significant aspects of communication is being able to, to convey it first to someone else. And, and I, I just reassured him. I was like, look, you've told me You've given me this idea. You've told it to me in a way that I understand. And not only do I understand, but you've got me invested now. Yeah, right? It's you not a, yeah, you're, it's not a matter of a lack of clarity. It's not a matter that you don't know how to get the idea on the page or screen. What comes next is finding a way to get that to your audience, your prospective clients, so that they have a chance to have the experience that I've had. And that would be the next step in that case, right? But frustration in, in those instances, that's a good sign. It's just, as you said, Olivia, I don't want anyone to live with that, right? That's that's our job. Because what happens is paralysis most of the time. Bingo. And nothing yep. happens. If you, and then you just live with this festering frustration and you're not actually doing anything with these creative energies that could be put to use with the right yes. tools, which would be a writer to bridge that gap. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And it, again, a, a, a wonderful way of putting it. It comes back to enthusiasm, right? Let's get out of our way. I think the, one of the hardest things that we do as writers, as advisors, is people just trying to be good people doing good work is getting out of our own way. I mean, there is a time and a place to share stories of who we are, right? I don't want to suggest, I don't want to contradict everything I've said to this point. It's very true, but not all of those stories need to be told and they don't all need to be told at the start. And one of the best things you can do to alleviate that frustration that leads to paralysis is just get out of your own way. I mean, that's a lesson I remind myself of every day. And trust me, a lot of my time each day is spent whether I'm posting to LinkedIn, whether I'm working on a client brief, whether I'm working with, with customer facing copy, a lot of it has to do with overcoming the frustrations that I myself have. Because even for me, like I, this is what you and I do. We work with words all day long. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I myself each day am like, oh, oh, oh words. <laughs> right? Oh my God. Right. But then when I'm done, I'm like, wow. You're good at this, Olivia. <laughs> You're a nurse. Yeah. And it, but it's just that I know I go through it and I'll go through it from one article to the next or one email to the next. And, it, you know, you sometimes you get on a route and you just keep going and going and things are great. But, you know, uh, I do the same thing. So uh, I'm glad that you should. 
Well, and the other part of it too is I, I, I would just remind everyone when we talk about a final draft, I, I want to put final in quotes. And this so is what do you mean for final in quotes? Because I have a feeling I know what you're about to talk about. And well, I, <laughs> I, I'm just going to say, I mean, because we do live in a digital world at this point and because so much of our, our content marketing is social media driven now, don't forget when you're repurposing content, P.S., creative recycling is hugely important, <laughs> yes. right? And if you're thinking that's cheating, I want you to rethink your approach to marketing because content multiplication is a huge component in the digital era, right? But we live in a digital space. And so a final draft can be edited. If you know, and trust me, you're going to look when your, your listeners go to my LinkedIn page, you're going to see a lot of content that's been edited. Why? Well, two days later, two hours later, a week later, a month later, I'm looking at that same content thinking, you know what? I can say that more directly. I can say that more relatably to my audience. I can get rid of X, Y, and Z here and focus on a prime, right? It is part of what we do in your content more often than not nowadays is movable, is editable, right? When you multiply that content, you can make the edits, right? Your final draft is final and you can always be strengthening it and improving it. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with that. I mean, even we, you look at stuff that I look at stuff that I've written, you know, when I first started my business and the, the key principles are still true, but I found that there are better examples that I can give or, you know, just uh, ways to make it clearer or turn it into something else. And this content, I like the way you put that content multiplication, um, you know, reuse, recycle. I just read an, an email from, it was something like morning brew, but it's like not morning brew. It's called something else. I can't remember the click. Maybe, I don't know. The whole thing was an ex this is extremely long email, but I was interested because I'm in marketing and I write emails and I write stuff all day long was outlining which parts of their previous email they sent out were reused. And it's like 70% of the email was reused from That's other emails great. over the past three years. So they really only had to create 30% new when you're first starting. Of course, you're building up your library and you're going to not yeah. have this many things to reuse, but the more you build and these are at these in these assets that you purchase from a content writer, these yeah. in this intellectual property is yours forever to do with whatever you want. I mean, yeah. you buy one article, you could do 50 things with it. I mean, yeah. you're not just getting something that's a one and done. It's, it's yeah. a one and over and over and over again and turn it into an infographic or a sound bite or whatever. I mean, same with podcasting, you know, Matt and I were talking about this or I think it was Matt and you do the podcast and you've got unlimited access to content clips. I mean, for however long that you feel like using them. I mean, it's really up to you how much use you get out of it. I mean, uh, for example, if you're, you know, people are always talking about, I want to get my money's worth. I bought this theme park ticket. I'm going to get my money's worth. Well, get your money's worth, take your stuff, make it into something new, reuse it. It is not cheating. Absolutely not. I mean, yeah. Unless you're stealing somebody else's content outright and claiming it <laughs> as your own, you're not cheating. You're just being smart. So, no, I I couldn't agree more, and and I just I I find it to be one of those fascinating opportunities. Creating a digital media library, um, a library of assets, creating swipe files. I can't tell you how invaluable that is. Because even if it's just a quick little top of mind post, right, right. That, that, that is going out on LinkedIn, even if you're, you know, dropping a, a, an Instagram photo that, you know, you first, you first um, posted two years ago, but it marks an anniversary, keep the, 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 the digital assets that you have. And also, too, um, you know, your point is a very good one, Olivia. Quite often, the work that we're delivering to clients is is something that, that that can be shared out in multiple different contexts and can be reused to great effect, right? Which is why it's probably not gonna cost you $50, 
right? <laughs> and I think it's really important for, for clients to, to understand that as well as you're not just getting an article or a blog post or, you know, a, a one month social media campaign. As you said, you are getting an endless library of content that you can create and really recycle and, and repost and reshare and repurpose. Um, and I, I, that example you gave of that email, that's brilliant. I absolutely I love that. It. I mean, if I can find it, I should share it on LinkedIn. I don't know if yeah. there's a way to share the email, but I mean, it was really fascinating. It, re- it dissected the entire thing and said, this came from this, these years of life, you know, don't yeah. always kill yourself trying to make new, new, new. I yeah. mean, it takes energy to creative energy to create new all the time. And yeah. if you're outsourcing, money cost money so yep. you can do a little you know supplement yourself with things that you've already paid for or yep. whatever uh you should definitely do that <laughs> yeah yeah i couldn't agree more and and like i said that's you know that's built into our pricing so <laughs> if it's, you're like wait a second it's <laughs> you're <laughs> charging how much for well again you're getting an article but you're also getting intellectual um, property yeah, how much content is available there in a thousand word article? Oh my goodness gracious, how many opportunities are you buying with that particular asset? So I, I think that that's a really important point too. Um, you're getting tremendous value when you're getting any written content. Yes, absolutely. Well, Derek, I, before we close, because we have definitely gone over the time, but I don't care because I'm having so much fun. And I think that this is really one of the most insightful podcasts I've done so far for, will be one of the most insightful for advisors and my listeners, because it explains so much about how this works. Um, and now, before we close though, I would be remiss if I did not ask if there's anything else that you would like to speak about. Oh my goodness gracious, we could go on for hours. <laughs> we could, we could. But with that in mind, maybe we'll just have to schedule another one for- Oh, I would love that, let's. Now. So um, thank you all for joining us so much. Um, Derek, let us know where we can find you. Yes, um, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Derek Pollard, PhD. You can also find me at uh, www, do we even need that these days, right? Well, Constellar creative.com. I know that'll go into the show notes for everyone. Um, And please note, uh, if you happen to listen to this podcast, uh, we're at the tail end of March of 2020. I'm anticipating within the next, say, month to three months, having my website redesigned. So um, there's that added bonus. If you check now and check back, um, you know, within, I'm going to say a few months, you're going to have a different experience. And I'm really excited about that. So I'm excited to check it out as well. I've been saying I need to redo my website, but you know, you know how it goes. Cobbler. Time. Time, right? <laughs> so um, you guys know where to find me. Everything will be linked in the show notes. You will want to follow Derek on LinkedIn. I can personally attest to the fact that he is very insightful and posts very helpful information. Um, He's also very uh, instrumental in connecting with other people, which is basically the whole point of everything we've been talking about today. So thank you for joining us on a Get Advisor Fit. This is Olivia Looper reminding you to lift heavy, invest often, and market your ass off. Thanks for listening to Get Advisor Fit with Olivia Looper. To learn more about Olivia and how her firm, Lexicon Content Development, can help you, visit LexiconContentDevelopment.com. If you want to reach out to Olivia on LinkedIn, you can find her at Olivia Looper Lexicon. And if you'd like to follow Olivia on Instagram, you can find her at Lexicon Content Development. Till next time.